Did you miss the big drop in the stock market back in March? Well, I'm here to tell you that you're not the only one. As a matter of fact, millionaires and billionaires also did. Some were able to take advantage, others were cautious and didn't make any major moves. Warren Buffett, for example, has been on the sidelines and only selling. In today's video, I want to discuss how the famous billionaire Druckenmiller spoke openly on CNBC about being far too cautious on the recent market rally and underestimated how far the Fed would go. Let's dig deeper into this because there are quite a few important points that Druckenmiller discusses. Things such as few growth stocks are to blame for the rally, small cap outperforming large cap during May, and the dangers of timing the market. Let's dive into it. Welcome to another episode of Investing with Kurt, the channel where we focus on real investing advice rather than trading and speculation. I try to weed out the noise for you and give you all the important things you need to consider as a long-term investor. So in today's video, I want to discuss Druckenmiller's interview not because I want to pick on him and to point out he was wrong, but rather I want us to learn as much as possible from what he's saying. And as usual, I'll give you the highlights and the important points because they can be subtle and you may not pick up on them and on the messaging, especially if you're a beginner investor. Let me play you a two minute clip of Druckenmiller. Very limited number of large cap, but very large cap companies that benefit from COVID. And there are hundreds of companies that get hurt by COVID. So that's why say the first 35% of the rally was led by the growth stocks. And now it's being led by, obviously, the last few weeks, the value stocks. All right. So the first point he makes here is that just a few growth stocks are to blame for the rally and some value stocks. The growth stocks, I can tell you he means basically the FANG stocks and Microsoft. So Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, those are the FANG stocks. And then you also have the great performance of Microsoft. Thanks to their cloud offerings, they have been doing pretty well. Now remember, I did an episode about the Best and Binder study a few weeks ago, and if you've not seen that, make sure to check that out. But what the academic study tells us is that only about 4% of the stocks of the overall stock market offering are the winners historically. And the rest of the stocks, they either perform as bad as bonds or even worse, which means you're getting less than 2% of return. So what Druckenmiller is saying in this CNBC segment here should be of no surprise to us. It simply confirms what academia has been teaching us about investing. And I really love this because it is a real and recent testimony of the validity of this research. Again, if you want to know more, check out the video link in the description. There is one more point that Druckenmiller makes and many investors may not have noticed the trend that small cap stocks have had a bigger jump than large cap growth stocks. This is just as a side note, but I'm not going to go deeper into small cap value in this particular episode. Now, let's go back to the Druckenmiller's interview. Let me just say, you got to have an open mind. The health situation is ever evolving. Um, I don't think anyone, particularly me, knows how it's going to end up. Um, personally, I have still something like Amazon and Microsoft are my largest holdings, but I have the least growth weighting in my portfolio I've had maybe for six or seven years. Um, I don't want your viewers to get too excited about that because as some of your commentators have pointed out correctly, I could change my mind in a week or two. This is very binary how this comes out on the health front, but I just think it's a fascinating time where if you get a vaccine, say by January, February, you get one distinct outcome within the market. And if you don't get a vaccine for a year or two, you get another distinct outcome within the market. Then you've got all the stimulus plans. If they deliver in July, you get one outcome. If they don't, liquidity falls off a cliff and you get another outcome. So Druckenmiller is right. I mean, there are multiple scenarios that can drive the market one way or another. And these scenarios are all dependent on the health situation, as well as on how the Fed and other central banks deal with the situation. And because there is a great uncertainty, 
The point I want to highlight here is that your portfolio should be built in such a way that it has defense built in. So defense would be holding a certain amount of bonds or having a higher diversification or both. You should be comfortable with your holdings and not be urged to sell. I mentioned this over and over, but your asset allocation that is part of your investment plan, that should keep you grounded and non-emotional. So as always, I'm staying flexible, um, but I've been far too cautious. I was, I was up 2% the day of the bottom and I've made all of 3% in the 40% rally and I missed a great opportunity here. Won't be the last time, but um, those are my... All right, this is the best part of the interview where Drucken Miller says, he made 2% when the market hit the bottom on March 23rd, but then during the rally back up, he only made 3%. However, the market went up about 40% and is back, you know, almost to pre-outbreak levels. This is huge. It is a huge missed opportunity. And again, I'm not trying to pick on Druckenmiller. In fact, probably many investors are in the same boat. I just want to stress that there are no experts in this. No one knows how the market will turn out, not even billionaires. So my message to you is really to avoid trying to guess what the market will do because it's impossible. And let me dig a bit deeper on that 40% rally and the dangers of trying to time the market. So back on May 12th, Druckenmiller was saying something totally different, by the way, in front of CNBC as far as his appetite for stocks. He said, the risk reward for equity is maybe as bad as I've seen it in my career. Indeed, stocks did drop dramatically in March, but all the major indices have since rallied and recouped many of their losses. He also said, I don't see why anybody would change their behavior because there is a viral drug out there. And while those statements may be true, he's now sort of regretting he didn't buy amidst the first outbreak of the virus. He missed to buy stocks on the cheap. So him admitting he was wrong and missing the 40% rally proves one very important thing, especially if you invest in something like the S&P 500, and that is missing the critical months. Many investors know that equity markets are certainly very volatile, but you may not know that the performance of an index, for example, is often dependent on a very short period of performance history. There are studies that show that on average, there were just 7.4 or 7.5 what's called critical months in a 15 year period. So if you are not invested in those critical months, you will miss on all the gains of the index and net net you will not come out ahead. So if you're buying and selling the S&P 500, it is likely that you will miss those critical months of gains. And if you think, okay, I'm not a stock picker, I'm not buying individual stocks, rather I'm betting on an index. But if you trade that index and you're trying to time the market, you will still lose money because you will be missing the critical months of gains. I want to stress another point that Drucken Miller made that he underestimated how the Fed would go and how effective it will be. The Fed set a dangerous precedent and I'm sure will hit negative rates when the next bubble pops, but the Fed has essentially eliminated the risk in equities. That's why you see many people jump on equities. But also, there is another reason. Many investors lost track due to all that is happening, but the dollar has been weakening in the last couple of weeks. If we compare the dollar with some other major currencies like the euro, there is a significant weakening in the pair. In fact, we are almost at the 52-week low, the dollar-euro trading price. Even for a badly impacted currency like the British pound, you know, it lost a lot of its positions due to Brexit, the pound is gaining traction against the dollar. So the effect of the Fed printing money is perhaps already evident, I think. We have a weakening dollar and some may fear those may be the signs of higher inflation, even the beginning of hyperinflation. This is why I believe people are buying equities even in these volatile market times. They are looking for assets to put their money in rather than keeping cash as it may be devalued. Similarly, people that like cryptocurrency, they are buying Bitcoin and other crypto to protect and diversify their cash exposure. 
If you're a subscriber to the channel, you know I already did a video on how crypto can protect us from hyperinflation and is one way to diversify our cash holdings. If you've not seen it, check it out. I will link to it in this video. All right. After all we talked about in this episode, I want to come to the part where, as you know, towards the end of my videos, I give you my opinion on what you should do. Well, if you continued investing to the market downturn, you would have bought more stocks cheaper and you would have been up right now with your portfolio. In other words, if your dollar cost averaged into the market, you would have come out ahead compared to prior to COVID. But if you stood on the sidelines and you did nothing, that is also good. This is probably the second best strategy you could have deployed. Definitely better than selling your stocks. That's the worst strategy. Because we don't know when all of those uncertainties will be resolved. And mind you, there may be a series of drops and further corrections in the upcoming months. As I record this video, the market dropped 5 or 6% in a single day again. So there are many more opportunities to buy discounted stocks. But more importantly, I think you shouldn't look at this as, oh, I missed the bottom or when will be the V-shaped recovery so I start buying stocks. Rather, it is important to understand that the price of stocks today would be essentially significantly cheaper than what they will cost in 10 or 20 years from now. So regardless of what price you bought your shares, before, during, or after the outbreak, you will do well if you hold good quality, low-cost stocks in a well-diversified portfolio. And if you're new to my channel, check out some of my other videos about what stocks to pick, what should be your asset allocation, or how to create an investment plan, for example. Those are all part of my investing playlist. Also, if you've not subscribed, make sure to do so and hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I post new videos. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you learned something new today on investing. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to destroy the like button as usual and if I missed anything, drop it down in the comment section below and I'll make sure to cover it in the next episode. For example, I realized that I need to make a video on dollar cost averaging because it seems ever so important to understand and deploy as a investment strategy. So until next time, Stay the course and keep investing regularly.